Hi, everybody. I'm Mary Long here with uh, Kali Wisson uh, from Australia. Uh, and I met Kali uh, last summer. I was uh, fortunate enough to take a class with Kali. And I think uh, Robin Strand, who's on here, and a couple other people uh, also took your classes, Kali. So you've had a few of us in Michigan and in Washington State taking classes with you. Fantastic. So, so Kali, um, tonight we're going to spend some time having you um, uh, critique our work that we all submitted uh, um, by Sunday night. And um, I thought it would be useful if you would to kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and your background in art and and okay. uh, and we'll get going. Yeah. Okay, dog. No worries. Actually, I've just put up um, my wife and I and we were in the city yesterday and I thought, oh, it was, it was actually a little windy, but I thought there was a beautiful light. So I photographed Brisbane for everyone. So this is, of, we're a river city and this is the city I was born in and raised in. So I've lived my whole life here in Brisbane. And we're sort of a subtropical state, a little bit like sort of Florida, a lot of beaches, high humidity. You don't want to come to Brisbane in uh, December, January, February, even a little bit of March, unless you love humidity. Um, so um, my father's an artist. Um, he was known as one of the top artists in our state through the 70s, 80s, 90s. And he's 80, we had uh, lunch with him on Tuesday. He's coming up to 87 now. So he's not sort of um, as active as he needed to be or so he's more painting for himself and just enjoying his life. But he taught uh, me uh, when I, I started when I was 20. I was actually a, a carpenter originally. Then he had a small picture framing business, which I worked in there for a little while. And I'm a twin, so, uh, and I'm one of seven children as well. So I'm number five and my twin's number six. He grabbed us on the first Tuesday night in June, 1986. My twin brother lasted about um, uh, one and a half lessons and he's never picked up a brush ever since. But he's more of an engineer sort of brain, a bit like my mum's side of the family, where my dad's is sort of the art family side of the family. So, um, and then I've uh, had my first solo exhibition at, when I was 24. And I think I've had 29 solo exhibitions since that one. Mm -hmm. And it's just been sort of work, 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 and um, uh, doing as much sort of side study as well. And um, but yeah, th this is actually it's a fraction blurry, but this is this, uh, the river from uh, the western mountain of Brisbane, so you get a bit of an idea of sort of the city there. But uh, so yes, yeah, so I live on the northern side, um, but we live in a very sort of leafy. There's a lot of sort of gum trees, and there's a lot of uh, bushland still thankfully around where I live and grew up so yeah so um, it seems like those are a lot of the things that you're painting how much is how much of your painting life is plein air um, and for the first 12 years it was sort of about 50 50 60 percent outside maybe in maybe 40 percent inside uh, I used to be able to just uh, grab my drawing book and walk across the road to the paddocks to the fields and draw the old sheds and um, but I found as I've been asked to do more teaching um, as I'm doing more traveling and now I'm doing sort of the online teaching um, I, I don't get as much time to get away and it's always normally good to have some painting buddies to or friends to go with and as you get busier you, you don't get the chance to sort of catch up with them either so so it's more probably 80 percent studio and 20 percent um, plain air these days, and maybe even us, 90 this year. And, and maybe tell us about some of your art and your work. What, what do you do? Oh, right, okay. Um, I didn't think to sort of put um, much. Uh, so I, I sort of love to sort of paint anything from, say, interiors to landscapes, seascapes, um, urban sort of scenes. Actually, a lot of the scenes that um, uh, everyone has. Um, uh, posted of the type of sort of intimate sort of scenes that I do love to paint sort of houses and a bit sort of more sort of like not so much cafe scenes but that sort of short range um, 
scenes that are really sort of just can be just up the street or can be local to us. Um, even though I do then love my painting trips, uh, I think I've been to sort of um, Africa. I think South America is the only continent that I haven't been to now. So, oh, in Antarctica, sorry. Um, uh, inhabited sort of um, continent. But yeah, so I sort of do uh, boats on the beach and um, yeah, sort of just about anything. Um, actually, probably my Instagram page. And if anyone wants to get a good look at uh, Australian art, if you, when you get the chance, if you have a look on my Instagram page, uh, Collie Wisson Artists, I've been putting quite a few of my favourite Australian painters just to sort of spread the word of the Australian history of art and uh, and everything. So, yeah, so actually I didn't think that. I've been noticing as I follow you on Instagram that um, uh, you are uh, uh, inspired by those, some of the painters that you've been posting. I can oh, see. absolutely, absolutely. They were, actually, this, this is, actually, I've just managed to grab one of my paintings, if, if no one's ever sort of seen them. Oops. Yeah, so that's of the Sydney Harbour. Um, yeah, so that sort of just gives an, an idea. Actually, this is more of a type of subject that I used to paint sort of maybe 12, 15 years ago. I probably don't paint. The Sydney Harbour is just a spectacular place to, to not only visit, but especially to paint. And um, there's a lot of bush walks through the actual where the houses are. So you can actually walk uh, almost from the Harbour Bridge right round to some of the north easterly sort of suburbs it takes about sort of three to four hours of walking but there's all bush tracks and so you get all these wonderful vantage points to paint mm. from and um and so Kali, yeah, so. when when you're looking at this painting and thinking about what you're going to be um critiquing tonight um where we talked about light i wonder if you might even talk about um how you apply that and think about um mm. Okay. And yep. maybe talk maybe talk a little bit about what how you will be thinking about critiquing us tonight and, and uh sure, 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 sure. Yep. Um well I think for me the, the, the thing that I was trained by my father to look for first. And, and you know, somebody be, just asked, what is your father's name? Oh sorry, uh, Eric. Eric Wisson. And my dad's cousin is Ken Wisson, who's uh one of Australia he's ninety one now. Ken's one of the top abstract painters in Australia. Uh, one of his paintings sold for 92,000 wow. at auction. But my father's more of a traditional painter who's sort of representational, traditional, but who sort of just um, sort of sometimes very, uh, just pushes over to a little bit of semi sort of abstract and, but he's mostly more traditional. Um, but yeah, just, he's always been a great source of knowledge and information for me. So, and actually it's, it's um, my father and Ken's grandfather's youngest brother who lives in uh, Chicago. So, um, yeah, Edward Wisson, as I might have mentioned on a previous chat. I'm not sure. I think he lives, I think the family lived more in the southern part of Chicago from memory. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so I'll, I'll get into um, uh, looking at, so it's, composition really has to be working sort of up close, but also from a distance, because uh, a good composition should be able to grab you from a distance. If you walk into a gallery or you're walking into someone's home, the, the balance of placement. So I'm looking for where I'm placing some of these key points. Say my primary focal point or focal area will be here. I'll be aiming to look for as, uh, one of the lovely things that was told to me very early on, one of the top gallery owners said, people love to see distance. Even if it is a, a, a more intimate scene, people love to be able to look into it and to be able to see, have that, uh, that illusion of distance. So composition and effect of distance. And that's normally, the distance is normally achieved by the amount of atmospheric blue. That's, so that's that value in the distance. So it's the amount of atmospheric color we can get into our distance in vistas it's a lot easier and it's a lot more apparent uh, to be able to get that um, and then it's uh, making sure the perspective is accurate the perspective is right there's no sort of 
structurally sort of perspective concerns. Uh, and then probably the, uh, the brushwork, just to see how the paint's been laid on. Have they used too many big brushes, small brushes, too many brush marks, uh, similar? Uh, I, I love that your boats are a brush mark. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I find if we can say something in one brush mark or two, is always better than say 10 or 15. Um, Cause it, it allows, I'm not painting, I'm not trying to simplify to make it easy. I'm more wanting to simplify so that the message is easy to read. And I think that's probably uh, one of the misperceptions of uh, painting simple, reducing, uh, and, I, and I actually do love detail, but it's everything's got to be in the right, like an orchestra, it has to be all conducted and all controlled. So all these lovely little darks just need to be placed in the right sort of spot. And so that, uh, and then probably the final one was, sorry, was, was uh, the edges, how sort of strong someone's edges are, how, uh, where they're softening off, where they're not letting the eye sort of, because over here I'm trying to not let the eye, so I'm trying to bring the eye into here. Actually, I'll just reverse out all of those just so I can finish off. So I'm trying to get the eye to settle in that area, in this area, and this area. So I'm looking for that overall balance. You'll find my Mac's a little on the slow side, unfortunately, but it gets there normally in the end. There it goes. Um, so yeah, so I'm looking for a, a sound and wise use of the board, if you think, I'm not worrying too much about up here, but I've used two thirds of the board or the surface up quite nicely. So yeah, so it's that uh, balance of big shapes as well. So it's kind of a, a tick off of all those compositional and I'll probably, and then use of color, uh, cause sometimes color can be overused or sometimes even underused. So yeah, I did forget that. Uh, yeah, that comes with the tonal values, cool in the distance, warm in the foreground. But then to get light effects, we want nice and dark in the right area and then nice and light, normally somewhere in around that area as well. So, okie Um, Is there any more questions or shall we start? I think we can start. Let me just check. Um, nope, those, that's, uh, that was the questions. Yeah, so um, please, this is great. Okay. Okie so I think I counted about 31 or 32, so I'll do my best to um, get through as many and as I can. Because there were so many um, paintings to get through, I wasn't able to sort of, I, I was hoping to be able to put them up on a dual screen. So yeah, so there's quite a few lines in this building, sort of there's vertical ones, horizontal ones. When we look at the steps, uh, we look at the garden beds, uh, then there's the uh, shingles on the roof, there's more here. Uh, then we take into account. So wh whenever I'm looking at a painting to paint, I'm always trying to analyze the major shapes. And there are very good major shapes here of the structure of the house. Uh, there's not bad light, and it looks like the light's coming from this direction. So I'm sort of trying to take all of those things into consideration, the, the amount of color or, and I normally find most scenes have a lack of color so it's normally a matter of trying to introduce more color into it. And without seeing more of this particular uh, painting or the, the artist who's painted this one, I'm not sure if, because to me it looks very, it's a, quite a unique style. And I'm always hesitant to tinker with anyone's natural style because the worst thing is for me to say, oh, you should be doing it this way and that way. And all I'm doing is making uh, her paint more like me or more like Sergeant or more like someone else. I think as a, a teacher and a mentor with my online course, I'm more trying to bring out the best in each individual artist. So with that said, there is some, a few little compositional little concerns, the perspective, sorry, uh, perspective concerns, sorry. The perspective should be more there. So it's, so the building is just running out just a little bit. See how that's more sort of on that angle that way. 
That's why it's not a bad trick to actually hold your brush. Actually, it's the old fashioned sort of measuring. And if you can get your painting, sorry, in a spot where you can get the angle that you want close and then you can almost move it either down in front of your painting if you have a concern with perspective. So yeah, so what it's making the building look like, it's sort of gonna fall down sort of this way. Like it's just a little bit of a sinkhole there. Uh, so that's sort of one of the structural things that I would like to see this try to be altered. So that needs to be higher and this needs to be lower on that end. And the other uh, one to probably address is just the, yeah, just the strength of some of these horizontal lines as well. And normally if this line, the ridge line or the guttering line is out, it'll normally put all the other ones out. But with all the little um, weatherboard, all those little boards, we just have to watch that we don't uh, make them too strong because ultimately, we're trying to get the viewer to look in a particular area. And I would say here, that is a nice balance, say two thirds, one thirds, and two thirds across, and then one third back. So we do have a good place here. And I think with this post and the little set of stairs and the window, it's setting itself up for that. But I would say could bring in a bit more of that nice, uh, sunlight, I'll just bring that up, with that sunlight sort of coming, through, streaming through here and all that light on here. That's a great opportunity to be able to power the focal point to make it stronger, to make it sort of just grab the eye a little more because we don't really want this necessarily overpowering it because it's not very often that we'll say, look at a tree and say, oh, look at that great tree it, as a primary sort of uh, point of interest. We more say want to look at light on some steps or uh, uh, windows and, uh, and our eye will normally always be attracted to triangles. Triangles seem to be a, a very powerful uh, shape with our paintings. That's why it's good to have rectangles, never squares if ever possible. Even if they are a square, turn it more into a rectangle. Okay, so yeah, so and then and maybe just tone down a little bit of the extra foliage uh, and and play up some of the bigger areas, say the area there on the on the pavement there as well. So it's just a little busy. So that's the other concern. So okay, I better move on to the next one. Mary, just jump in if you need to ask, say something, or or you want me to say more about something, I'm more than happy to, uh, if you, if, if you No, this is great. I, it's uh, just to go at whatever pace you'd like. I know that we have um, a lot to cover, so you yeah, can, yeah. can move on. Yeah, yeah. And, and because you're a strong plein air painting group, I'll, I'll try and sort of uh, address some of those sort of aspects of uh, in the painting, because there's always, there's always a little compromise uh, when it comes to plein air painting, we, we normally only get about an hour and a half from start to, to that hour and a half being finished where the light uh, starts to change to a certain degree that it's almost not the same scene that we started with. So I think with this one, the, the purple in the foreground may have just been a little too purple. Uh, so it's, it's a nice warm colour, but I, I would sort of suggest just trying to gray it off just a fraction. Uh, we don't have to go as gray as the original scene, but definitely sort of gray them off just a fraction. And there is a little bit of a, a dark sort of patch there. I would sort of try and just lose that a little. So we, we, even with shadows, it's so important to get it the maximum amount of depth, distance, and of course also contrast from, and there's great contrast from light to dark. Um, it's always a danger when painting bricks as well. Uh, we, we can put some, but my advice would be when painting this sort of uh, subject, and I'll just get a little bit of advice from the, that's why it's always great to see the, the original scene because that's where the inspiration and information comes from. So I would say I would be trying to sharpen up 
that edge there and maybe up a little bit further. So then I'll come back to the original. So to my eye, the strongest point is about there because that's about the darkest dark. And the, and the danger is that my eye isn't really being held for long enough. So I would say a little bit lighter here, gray off that guy there. And just watch that when we put these buildings in, you could actually start to soften it, the shadow a little. And a lot of times it can be only 5%. See that little bit of dark up there? I'd even say soften that off because we don't really need the eye to rush through too quickly. And some of those lines will want to push the eye in that direction where the natural perspective of a street scene, of the roadway, pathway, will normally always run the eye. And this one's probably a little strong there because that's going to want to push the eye up in that direction a little too much. But yeah, just a little subduing of some shapes, especially on the brickwork there. Because we do have to remember that every painting does require some peaceful areas. We have a nice little bit here, but I think just a bit more peaceful area on here, a little bit stronger dark there. Because once again, we're really wanting the eye to stay in that area if possible. But there's a lot of strong work in that painting. Um, that, that's really got some stuff going on there nicely. Oh, okay. And I'll just bring up, also just bring up the, um, oh, I think this was um, one that didn't have a reference photo, but it was a, a watercolour and then a studio piece from memory. And there's some really strong work in the watercolour. And I may be, I'm only guessing, but I'm just guessing uh, the, the artist that did this one might be um, uh, quite fluent in watercolour, may paint quite often or, or started in watercolour and has come over to oil. I'm not sure, it might be an oil painter that just does a little bit of lovely little sort of sketches on site. Uh, but no, there's some strong, actually there's some bit of perspective concern there, but, um, but it, it, there's some strong watercolour aspects to that. And, and, and I wasn't Holly, sure if it's... Yeah, I think this is the painting and the other, I think is the yeah, sketch. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So this was the oil painting that was really wanting to be. And I think there's some beautiful uh, little, bits of detail and um, almost sort of filigree would be the word, that lovely sort of fine tuning sort of work that you probably do on say leather. Uh, if we think of our painting as a big piece of leather, this is the, the details of a, the filigrees. If it's say a saddle or something, it's the, those lovely little accents. But I think overall, and I, I, I'm unsure whether that's just how the painting photographed, it looks a little high key, but then there's some nice little darks here because uh, it does look a little, fraction blurry. So I would say some of these planes could get be all a little darker. There's just not enough saturation, not, not as dark as that. I would say more uh, this value, I just hope, but maybe just a fraction darker. And I'll just see if I can, maybe just a fraction lighter than that. But just a bit more saturation, yeah, that's a better one of the shadows because there's some lovely little accents. There's really a lot of nice work going on with this painting. But the fact that the shadow masses aren't hold, see how even with that nice shadow across the, uh, the path or the road there, it could go darker, but it's just not holding the viewer's attention. This painting has a lot of potential. I think if they just saturates and get a little bit more of that mid-tone, saturated in those bigger areas. So even a bit more shadow on this side. Uh, and see how, actually the roof of the building is a, is a classic uh, case of what's happening with the whole painting. If we just isolate that one shape, notice how there's a nice bit of dark, there's some nice uh, areas of mid-tone, there's some nice, very nice little highlights, but the balance isn't quite right. So it's a balance issue. Uh, needing to get a little bit more of the mids and the darks. It's got a lot of nice highlights and, and lighter values. But yeah, so that, that's what I would be looking for that one. Okay, so that's 15 minutes and I've done four. <laughs> okay. Um, <I've coughs> okay. 
actually, so here, so there's the submitted piece. And I'll just go back. And it actually looks a bit like Sorrento or somewhere on the Cinque Terre in Italy. I'm not sure, but that's just a rough guess. Could even be Sorrento. Okay, so we've got the scene and there's some really nice darks up in the big palm tree there. Uh, there's some nice directional lines. For some reason, this uh, little red line sort of plays up a little bit. So there's some really lovely directional lines that'll lead the eye in, lead the eye around. And that's always a very helpful and important thing when it comes to painting. So before I start, I like to isolate areas of, of importance, areas that, you know what, if I get that shadow on there, then I'll be well and truly starting to get the tonal aspect working. So see, there's those lovely darks up there, and then that darks on the, will then allow the, uh, the light to come in. So it's all, always very important to know where we're going to finish before we even start. So I, I'd say, yep, and, and this one is actually a little similar to the last one, lots of sort of mid-tone and light, but yeah, we, we're not really utilising our lightest values because if we were to bring in some nice light, say right up against how it was showing, excuse me, in the uh, uh, reference material, uh, that would then, so it's just, and what it does, it just makes it the painting feel a little flatter this way. Light will create more depth and distance from our background to our foreground. And a few of the other little compositional concerns that I can see. See, we've got a big mass there. We've got a big mass. Each area, shape-wise and mass, are working well but we need to tie them together. And sometimes I'll say, oh, this is such an important shape to tie together. I'll say it's like a steel chain that has to, it has to be that strong that they're tied together that strong. Or other times, this shape here and this one may not be as important, so that might be just a piece of string or a light bit of rope, but we do wanna tie this right-hand side with this left. Notice the big uh, gap that's just running through there. So a lot of times all it really requires is spreading a little bit of the foliage. Let's just have a look at the um, original and I'll always go back when I'm painting outside. Yeah, see there's that, we don't probably need that big solid mass, but just a bit more of that foliage there to help tie that shape together. I know why you've sort of done it because we, we're wanting to try and uh, push a hole through that center area, but I'd almost suggest bringing some of this guy in just in through here to help so that the foliage, and foliage is a great device to tie shapes together. It's one of our greatest ways. It's almost rarely ever the focal point, but it's a great thing to tie everything together. So that's tying down here. We're using the that shape there. So it's that bridging across there is what we need to look at. Okay, so we'll slip up onto number five. Starting to get sort of into the rhythm of things, folks, thankfully. Okay, so we've got the, the subject there. And the danger with this is, 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 is the, or not so much danger, but all the difficulty will be is the reflection. Is it going to be, because the background does have a lot of dapple lights, lights and darks, small shapes, big shapes. And so then we, we come back to the, the painting and there's some really lovely drawing in it. I, I do love the, the, almost the languid, I think or that sort of that, you know how trees, if it's a hot day or you'll see stuff sort of wilt a little, but there's that lovely sort of movement with the shapes, probably the, the trunk, maybe just have a few too many lines. I would want to try and lose some of, say, that shadow and maybe even part of that, just so that there's not too many, uh, see how with the original, there's not too many vertical lines. They're more sort of over here. So it's two thirds, one third shadow, two thirds light. So that's why I always go back. That's why if I'm ever in doubt, I'll either step back from my painting, move back, so I can see, because we're always sort of looking at things 
locally, I'll just get the camera, but we need to view things globally as well. Or we end up doing a lot of sort of good painting up close, but it can sort of drift and fall apart. And the other area that I would suggest with this one is just bringing the values are a little light overall. So I would be, if I was painting this, I'd be trying to bring in more light on this side. It's going to show where the light's coming from. And then also getting in some of those little, not too much, but a little, a few of those light accents in the background. So there's a lovely, oops, lovely passage of light in the background, a little bit of light here. Oops, that's just gone dull on me. A little bit of light there. Uh, just to sort of give it a bit more punch. It's such a sunlit scene. Because if it was an overcast, it, it's just appearing as if it's just a little more overcast than sunny day. If, if it was overcast, I'd still be wanting to say, hey, we need to get those darks darker. Uh, but no, no, that, that's, that's really got some nice work going uh, with it. I'll just see. Okay. So this is the um, reference photo. And we, here we have the, uh, the, the submitted piece. So straight away, I think, nice design. And th this is where sometimes if we choose a subject that is technically really difficult, that's when our technique is under the greatest amount of uh, pressure. Uh, so we'll just come back to the scene. So I would say this passage could be lighter. I'm, I'm feeling that this definitely can be lighter in value. We've got very good darks, uh, good indication that it is a nice sunny day, but I feel as though we, we've just gone a little too dark with that value there. And, and, and what by going lighter will do has a beautiful effect. I'll just get rid of those and I'll just see if I can bring up, this one doesn't kind of have a lot of concern when it comes to uh, composition. Composition's good, brushwork's looking pretty good. But see when we get this lighter, and this is the power of looking for edges and looking for these key points of one mass of light or one passage of light, it's probably the, the more accurate word, up against a, so if we remember that little simple little aspect, and then I'll just get rid of that. So what I aimed to do was put, use my light and dark, not color at all, just it was a more higher tint. So I've just put that dark mass up against the light of that. So straight away, it should start to bring that tree forward to the viewer and it'll start to give us a light effect, a stronger light effect. So we'll be able to see where that light's coming from. And then ultimately we need to show uh, where the, the light's going to. Uh, one of my favorite artists of all time, uh, just happens to be an Australian artist, but um, uh, you'll have to excuse me on that. But one of the great things that uh, he, he uh, his name was Arthur Streeton, and one of the great things that he was able to do was portray light. And Elif Gruner was able to do it as well, beautifully. Um, and it's the what secret was really name, was. Probably? Oh, sorry. Who, who also, oh, Elliot, what was his last name? Uh, Gruner. Uh, so it's Elif, E L I O T H G R U N E R, Gruner, mm -hmm. or Arthur Streeton. Um, but yeah, if you jump on my Instagram, uh, you'll see a lot of, and, and their names are all on it. But what they did was, what they, because they're probably the two, um, Anders Zorn from Sweden and Soroya, another great. They not only showed you where the light was coming from, but the true secret with painting light is showing where the shadow is going to. So what that does is it has 50% is where the light is coming from, but the other 50% is where the light's going to. And that's what they did so beautifully. Uh, and we do need to get as much color into those shadows as well, so that uh, it's not just a flat, blank sort of shadow like my top. I've got a black top on. Okay, so we'll get down to business. 
actually, I, uh, my throat's just getting a little dry, so I'll just give it a quick drink. Okay, I don't normally talk this much, <laughs> uh, unless I'm probably teaching, I guess. So there we have the, the reference, and we'll come back to the, the painting. Whenever painting, my advice would be to the artist that submitted this one, whenever you're painting anything that may have a certain, like it might be cows, sheep, um, dogs, cats, birds, uh, ducks, chickens, draw them first, draw, draw them, especially if it's, say if you wanna, you really have an interest in painting um, pigeons or, or, or types of birds, draw them regularly, draw them enough so that we get their, oops, I want that, so that we get their, their body's profile and we understand their shape really well. Oops, because a lot of times with shapes, we don't need the entire, every feather, every uh, fluff of hair or, or fur or whatever it may be. So, because there's, this one's just, this one's just leaning a little, so we've got to get that center of balance, whether it's a, a figure where this has a really lovely balance and it's got the neck, neck tucked down. This one maybe just a little thin. Um, so yeah, so just practice drawing just that little more and it, the drawing practice helps our overall painting. And the other concern is that these shapes in the distance are going to want to compete with the foreground shapes. So I'm always looking at ways almost like a still life, simplification in the background, more information in the mid distance, but most of the information in that bottom 30% of the painting. The only time that normally doesn't is maybe some interiors or a portrait where the person's eyes, nose, I'm oh, sorry, eyes, nose and mouth will be normally up higher. That's where it's kind of goes against it. Um, you may have just overworked looks like a watercolour, maybe just overwork some of the, the birds as well. There, there's a little bit like uh, the, the rooftop in one of the earlier ones. We do want some simplification. This is probably the strongest of the birds. So yeah, so that's mostly what I'm sort of looking at and thinking of. Uh, I believe there was, was no uh, reference photo with this one. And actually with that, shame on you. <laughs> um, uh, unless you didn't have your phone or camera with you, but I always, uh, whether I'm uh, walking past something and it just happens to be a great scene, normally nowadays it's great that we always have our phones on us because we have a high quality camera. Um, but it is good to record uh, your subject matter just for reference later, just that that's always been my number one sort of rule of thumb. Whatever I'm painting or drawing, I do like to have some sort of uh, photographic record of it. And I'd say overall, this painting's working really well. And I believe the store wasn't open, so that, that's why it looks like the stair, uh, chairs are stacked up. Um, I almost would have left all of those stacked chairs out, even though it kind of does indicate that it is closed. But a lot of times we don't get to say, oops, to say that to the viewer. And people are thinking, because my first thought was, oh, okay, what, what's going on with the, I can see that they're chairs, what's going on there? Um, so, and it creates a nice clearer path uh, so that we can understand visually what's happening if you just simplify, especially in the distance. Uh, and actually the other one was this foreground chair just looks a little tall and thin. I reckon to take up a bit more space and just to make, give it a bit more physical size because this cabinet's great. The, the, the table and chairs is working nicely there. Beautiful little aspect, lovely little highlight on there. Just the sweetest little highlight there, which is great. But yeah, so a little bit of simplification. That's actually quite busy, but it's working. That's working. So maybe see if we can make even, even as wide as that. Whether, whether it was like that or not, I would say artistic license would say to me, because see how it over helps and overlap. So that'll help tie the foreground into here, which is tying into the background. So, okay, so now that was a really lovely 
uh, color harmonies, drawing, really has everything. So yeah, so there we have the uh, student piece and uh, the reference material. And immediately I'm sort of thinking, you know what, that's a beautiful aspect. Uh, we can see where light's coming from, where it's going to. It's gonna create a nice balance, everything's going good. But my, my concern, if I was painting with it, what am I going to do with the foliage? And my answer probably would be, and is, is that I would aim to make a focal there. There's a beautiful little bit of light like up against the dark. So there we have that triangulation of my, to use the board up as wisely and as, as smartly as possible. Yeah, so we probably just have, there's some lovely work here. We may just have, see how there's like a vertical line there and it's creating a shape, a shape, and then almost another shape. And there's, so yeah, so we've just got a little too many sort of vertical lines there. I would build up the mass there, build up the mass there a little bit. See how by doing that, it's more focused on this one. And then I would be playing up some more of the lights here. But to do that, to make it work, you would need a little bit more of the dark, because wherever there's light, we do need dark. So I'd be putting a little bit of that, a bit more of the dark, and even bringing these flowers, not directly below, sort of there, because we don't want it all in a straight line, but bringing them more towards the right hand, uh, left hand side, sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. So yeah, just so that those flowers aren't directly Below. See how they're sort of almost directly below it, bring them here. But yeah, break up some of those. But so lots of really good painting in that one. It was more just that bottom area. Uh, that was a concern. So I'll move on to the next one. I was hoping to get halfway. Uh, so then we have, uh, this is a little blurry to me. So if it does appear a little blurry, I'll just bring that up maximum screen. So then we'll go back. And the main concern Whenever we're painting water, especially sort of the creek scenes, there's always going to be the reflection, even though it's not overpowering the actual, um, so yeah, so it's um, getting too many verticals. We want the eye, and I would like to see the eye more in up here, not so much down in the water, even though there's some beautiful, this almost reminds me of uh, a painter with a lot of talent, but just hasn't stood back enough. I can see the skill in the painting, but not quite maximizing the, the visual effect, the visual performance. So I would be going, let's just bring up the reference just quickly. I'd be trying to see those lovely darks in on the bank there. I would be aiming to try and get the eye more up into here. And actually that is a little steep it probably should be a little flatter. So I would be aiming to bring more of that across there in more of the dark. And then you can play up. Let me just find a nice green. That's gonna be way too green. And actually this, this, actually this raises a good point. When, with, when working with greens, the trick is you'll see that I'm going down. If you can see on that top right, I'm going closer to red. And that's the secret with any green. So yeah, so more darks and that angle was just going, the water was just going uphill just a little, or it was appearing as if the water would be running just uphill a little where water should always run sort of almost, that, that middle line wasn't right, but should always balance horizontally. Unless a waterfall, sorry, in most cases. So yeah, so what I was doing was strengthening up this part here, because it's two thirds, one thirds, uh, and hopefully everyone has been sort of um, uh, told or, or had it mentioned to them that the golden mean, uh, so it's one third, one third, I'll just quickly go over it just in case. So that's the four points, and we normally only want to use three of them, so I'd be going those three points, and we don't need the fourth, because what does that normally create if it's a squarish board? We normally create a square. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so I was going to anchor it down here. So it's in one third across 
two thirds, down two thirds. So it's in that really sweet spot for a focal point. Uh, so I was going to, I would suggest to darken the, the creek bank, strengthen the, the verticals, and then bring that grass or that uh, foliage in behind there and even bring it in even uh, lighter and brighter if we want, we can even go because we're controlling the scene via our directional lines, as I mentioned. But of course, I think just as powerful is our lights and our darks. And if there's, if after 20, nearly 25 years of teaching and 33 years of painting, the number one thing that most people uh, have trouble getting strong enough is their tonal values. They may get them nice darks, but then won't get the lights or vice versa. And the other little quick one here is there's just a little repetitious brushwork up there or shapes up there. That was the other thing, just grabbing my eye. And do want to really simplify the water so that the eye will go more into that area. Okay, let's go with number 13. And I, I, know, I know this one's yours, Mary, so I've got to be nice and polite. Um, no, um, so we'll have a look at the reference. Um, it's a nicely balanced scene. What, what we've got is just a little too many shapes that are just a little too deliberate and, and just a little too even. See how both sides of the, the coffee table and almost the, the entire area. So what we need is lighter values and we need to break up just the evenness and how, because one of the things that our eye will fatigue on is values that are too close and not punctuated, but we do have some nice light values up in the background there, but we could have a little more. So yeah, so it's getting more light on here. Oops, I'll just bring that guy back. More light. Way too much. Oh, sorry. I wasn't sure if someone was asking a question. Um, yeah, so more light on here. You've driven the eye nicely to the, the focal point. Um, and you, you may have just used a little too much color. See how we've sort of got quite warm, bright color there. I would say for this, we could have brought more of that darker value, not so dark, but that darker value in this side because the bright color will want to come forward and in the mid distance, we're still wanting to subdue things. Uh, so by going darker there, and we also have just a few lines that we, we may want to just adjust sort of across here. See how we sort of got a lot of lines that we can try and blend and lose those. And we've got some lines up here on the umbrellas. I always say, make the cl one closest to us, the most visually important, the, the one that everyone wants to look at, everyone needs to look at, and then uh, simplify the, the, the ones that are going further away. And the yellow up on here may be a little strong as well. We can subdue that. You may even wish to go say even as subdued as back there. So if I just bring up the reference, see how that's really lovely and gray back in back in the back in the in that background there. So we're just limiting the amount of depth we can get if that background gets too warm up in that left hand side. Okay. We'll just mosey on. See, so watch those edges, watch the variety. And actually this one's probably one that's in the similar sort of vein as well. Uh, there is just so much going on. I, I believe there wasn't a reference photo with this one, but yeah, unfortunately with, and it actually has, has some strong abstract qualities about it, but the, even with a, an abstract painting, we still do need some direction from our tonal values. So that's why we're wanting to sort of try and sub, really subdue the background to create a little more depth. Uh, and notice how we've got sort of one shape there 
we've got a little bit of red, we've got bits of white, we've got little bits of orange and that's quite strong. And then right beside that. So everything is just jumping out a little bit too much. We need to subdue, especially say up on, if we were to, actually I'll go back out of it really quickly. If we were to subdue, um, if we were to think of this, oops, uh, I know what's happening. When I'm reversing out of certain things, I'll just see, yeah, there we are. It goes back a, a, a brush, it jumps a brush too. So if we subdue this big shape or uh, look at this big shape, see how there's sort of horizontal lines. It's just a bit too much visual information for our eye to cope with. So we've got to be thinking in distance, uh, mid distance and then trying to get the foregrounds very small but then trying to get something in the foreground, the foliage. Uh, actually there's a better way for me to even show that, I'll just do it quickly, is to think in terms of atmosphere in the distance, a little bit of yellows or greens, something warmer in the foreground. So that's when we'll be using blue in the background, more red and yellow in the mid distance but then even more of both. So there would technically be a little bit of blue in that mid distance, but then we're going for broke. So we need to think more in planes, distance, mid distance and foreground. That foreground is just so powerful. There's so many shapes going on. So we just need to subdue some of those big planes, especially that one there. Shall we take a break, Mary? Yes, five minutes. Kali, I just want to say um, I'm a huge fan. I've been following you on Instagram for since I got back into painting two years ago. And I went to the bookstore and got that a book on oil painting that there's one a couple of your paintings in. I think the, oh. the English. Uh, oh yes, piece. yes, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm just so thrilled. Thank you so much for doing this. It means a ton to me. Oh, that's a pleasure. I, that's. I've done the online workshops, but I've been thinking about the mentoring and haven't gone there yet. Right, yep. Um, actually, probably the best way that I can put um, how Tucson Art Academy Online have structured it, I wish it was around when I started painting. Because, oh, yeah. Yeah, because um, a lot of, even though my father was an artist, but I see, I was trying to break away from his style, his approach. Um, and there wasn't too many artists that were good teachers as well, especially back in the 80s. So I'd have to catch buses and planes um, to Sydney and Melbourne and to try and study with some of the other top artists in Australia. Um, so I always felt, boy, I really wished th this was around when I was starting because it really is a great way to just get that feedback get some advice, uh, keep you on track. It's really, really quite an amazing um, uh, way to learn and, and to get information across. Uh, uh, to be brutally honest, I was skeptical. Gabor told me about it in 2013 and I thought, oh, I don't think that's gonna work. I can't <laughs> see how that's gonna work. But once yeah. I went back uh, in 2015, um, and he showed me more about it, I started to think, okay, I, I now understand. Um, and then when Procreate came on sort of the scene and because mm. I can actually do corrections. Uh, oh yeah. So Kali, Kali, why don't you just for a second before I get started again, talk a little bit about your new book, talk about um, some of the things that you offer. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. So it's going to be an ebook. And this is, will be sort of the front cover. Actually, I can um, even bring it up on my iPad. That's just the cover. But I have... Um, and I'll just... Yeah, so that will be... Um, bring it a little closer. Every, yeah, what everyone will see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, yeah, so it's, is that back to front to you? Yes. All oh, right. Oops. So, yes, it'll have sort of the usual index, but um, then it'll have some drawings in it. And I have, I think, 10 chapters, which will be all sort of step by step. Then there's gallery pictures, 
Um, I think there's about 70 or 80 sort of individual pictures. But then the, the beauty is we've got videos in it of a small still life. I do a recap, video recap at the end of each um, chapter. Uh, there's a two hour video that everyone will get. That's uh, so long as you're on the internet, you just link up. It's in uh, Vivo or YouTube. Um, I, talk, I had a little video about my palette and palette setup. So it's not the first ebook on art, but um, it's one that we've tried to pack as much information, as much, uh, that's why we sort of called it um, a compendium. It's, it covers my sort of 10 steps of how I got success and how you can get success uh, with impressionist painting. So I'm, I've spent about a year doing the painting and the writing and with Gabor we've spent about three months fine tuning it, getting it to look right and appear exactly how we want it to. So yeah, so hopefully um, next month she'll be all ready to roll and all ready to, um, to show everyone and so uh, will we, you'll, you'll send us or send me a link to it and I can pet, send it out or something? Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that. And, um, and if you really want to make sure you don't miss out or miss out on it being released, uh, I think if you go to Tucson Art Academy online and they have a little pop-up window and, th and then you'll get reminded. But if you don't want to be reminded every month or everyone, yeah, that's the other way to do it. I'll, I'll send it to you and then you'll just get the one blast out from, from Mary. So ooh, I think we're pushing the time there. So, yep. But um, actually I should say it's my third book that I've done solely. First one, I hate to say it now, was 19 years ago. Feels like it was only five or six years ago. But my that was creating impressionist landscapes in oil and then Impressionist painting made easy in 2009. So I seem to have about an eight or nine year turnaround from book. So it's my, and we, eventually we may print it, but that may be some sort of three or four years off in a physical copy because the sending out of the book is the hardest part um, and, and getting good reproduction. So, okay. So is everyone back? Are we all ready to roll? Yep, let's roll. Great, okay. I'm all warmed up now. Um, actually, uh, the gentleman whose painting is this, can I get a first name? Tom. Tom? Tom. 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 Yep. Okay, Tom. That, actually, that's my uncle's name, was, is uh, Uncle Thomas. Okay. Okay, Uncle Thomas. So we'll have a look at, um, your painting is very strong. Um, the, the values are harmonising, colours are harmonising. Uh, everything is working nicely. Probably the area that I would suggest and could say that we could improve things and I'll just for everyone's sake I will just bring up just quickly the the reference um, was actually was just the foreground was the lines and some of the holes uh, I think you've just got a couple too many I'll just now zip back to your painting I think you could almost take if you can see this oops that just went a little too big on me I would almost say you could take out almost, can you see where I'm working, Tom, on the foreground? I'm just yeah. simplifying. Yeah. See, yeah. How, see how by making that shape, uh, not a, it's a little bigger, but it's actually, I'll just go back out of it. Uh, and, and what's happening, what we've got is, it's just a little too much visual information, I think. And the eye, yeah. my eye is just having a little trouble um, analyzing and, and, and digesting all of those lines. So that's why I think if you were to do that to the foreground, as I sort of just previously sort of said, yeah, just reduce a little bit of oh, that. Yeah. A little bit of that. See what that, because what, what it's playing into nicely is, and see, that's where I think you would be probably ideal for, oops, for the mentoring because um, oh, I suppose everyone is because if you're just starting, it's a good way to get good advice. But I, I definitely can see that where you, what your paintings just need is a little French polish, just that little <laughs> uh, touch up here and there. Because 
And probably the other little thing, if you wanted to just enhance that sky, is just, oops, not quite light enough. And see by just bringing a little bit of light up there, that will be the top of the arc. And then this uh -huh. line will keep, see how that keeps the, uh, yeah. the eye nicely in that central area. One of our top painters, we sort of nicknamed him, and he wasn't as realistic as Norman Rockwell, but he was kind of like our Norman Rockwell. And he said, and this was some of the best overall compositional uh, advice that I've ever sort of got. If you, we see our paint, our board in front of us, think of it as the old fashioned well. I'm just going a little smaller than I would like, but. So he would draw a circle, or an imaginary circle, maybe a fraction bigger than I did, but just for argument's sake. And he said, you want everything falling from the outside mm. of that circle, falling into that, oops, into that circle. So that, that creates that vacuum to keep the viewer in that central area. Because you can imagine if, for argument's sake, we brought a really dark, strong shape up here uh, of, of foliage, it's only going to want to bring the eye up here. And that's getting out of that, oops, that lovely sort of circle area there. And to finish off, I think you, you may be able to just, uh, I'm up in this foliage area here on this big tree, just knock a few of those back. Let's just say that one, maybe that one. I think, uh, mm. I'm not sure what you folks call them, but we call them sky holes. Yeah, yeah. Sky holes sort of poking through. Yep, I wasn't sure if it was a universal term. But yeah, you can yeah. just sort of just knock back just a couple. So the mass of the tree, because what happens if we have too many, it's like a, a bucket with a hole in it. It lets too much water out. Uh, same thing, the mass of this shape is going to let too much of the sky, so too much of the water coming through that bucket. So if you build up the mass of the foliage that little more, it'll still have some coming through. So it's kind of not the perfect terminology, but yeah, so we just build up the mass of that and that'll just slow that down. But the most powerful stuff, I think, was that. Um, see, you, you, you've got some yeah. lovely brushwork. Um, and you may even wish to just, just knock a little bit more off there, just a touch. But other than that, really great effort. Sensational painting. Very, very well done. And I'll Thank just sneak you so much. Uh, That's a pleasure, Tom. Um, and either way, if, if you're... Don't decide to come on with this. That's perfectly fine as well. I'm. Um, uh, it's just something that's always out there for everyone. Okay, so we awesome. shall move on to the next one. Some really love, lovely sculpting. And I think I love to think of artists or us artists as sculptors, not so much painters or, um, oops, wrong one. So we need to sculpt. So with the sky, we'd be, putting the smoothest, flattest clay. And then with this, we'll be putting the, 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 the tool marks a little stronger. But then ultimately, we'd want the strongest tool marks in that foreground so that we're able to create depth and distance in three different ways. This is a little brighter than I would have liked. Let's just, I'm sort of trying to work with speed more than um, accuracy, unfortunately, but just to get, and actually, that's not bright enough. I'll just have one more go. Oop. Yep. So yeah, so that we not only go warm and brighter, but we want to go more jagged, more tree-like, more uh, texture. So that was 16. Let me just bring up the uh, reference. So it was really sort of like it was cropped off way back here. So it was more that this is the scene more sort of in here. So just to sort of, that's what I'm um, uh, guessing. So yeah, so then we'll come back. So to, because the, the uh, sky, there's some really lovely sculpting with the brush marks coming back around the edges of that. Probably the only concern was that um, the mass and I like to think of big cloud shapes as almost like a big dollop of um, ice cream that just scooped out of a big bucket. The big mass is almost urging me to go 
and push the eye in that left hand direction, which, which we don't really want because what we want is the eye to come down. And this is almost your classic sort of, even though it's a reverse, oops, I didn't want that one there. It's almost like a reverse S-shaped composition. And so that's why I would say, you could probably just put a little bit stronger shadow in under here, even try and soften that a little more there so it doesn't want to keep going in that direction. So just to wrap this one up, brighter, a little more, and that's where the um, hog hair brushes are good. Uh, I, I will tend to use a um, Rosemary & Co, uh, Sable, Eclipse, the more synthetic, softer brushes, the real soft ones, not the ivory. I think the ivories are more mid. I'll use, so I eliminate a little bit of brush work, bring in a little bit here, but then my hog hair, especially for foliage and especially for my foregrounds, even if it's a small brush, it wants to be a hog hair so that we do create almost that texture like of a tree, of grass growing, uh, so that we really do create a lovely uh, illusion of depth through our texture of our paint as well. But uh, so no, no, that, that one was really cooking and just needed some uh, fine tuning. So I'll just bring up the next one, just keeping an eye on that time as well. And I'm noticing that I'm only at 17. Um, I'm just guessing that um, the artist that's done this one is more in the, in the early stages. I might be totally wrong. Um, but some of the background colours, see back in here, that's a really lovely subdued orange brick. Oops, just failing to get that to fire. So with that said, it's very hard to create depth if we get our uh, background or mid distance values too strong. So actually I may even go to a green just to get him to stand. So, cause we need to think of our cool to warm. So our blues and uh, bluey greens in the background, which they're working nicely. If you imagine stepping forward from the background as far as we can in like a, a gridding system, if we were to say, and if, and if zero is way in the distance or one is way in the distance, and 10 is at our, right at our feet. We sort of say at number four, five, six, seven, eight. You, we're gonna run out, what I'm trying to get at is we're gonna run out of depth. So we've got to subdue that orange, more ultramarine blue in to push this shape back and especially in here, and then try and bring, oops, that's frozen on me. I'm just trying to work it a little too fast. Yeah, and try and bring more light onto that, more shadow onto here. And you probably possibly could have even gone a little bigger and see how you finished right on the edge. It's better to run it right out like that or get it to finish well inside. But no, it's more about those warm colors are just a little too bright. And we've got a structure in some of those shadows as well on the um uh, on those trees we probably just see how there is some structure to the shadow and light even though there's some awkward shapes there sort of awkward shapes on that awkward shapes on there but there are some nice shapes nice shadows nice light and placing we're not getting enough depth with our values is probably what i'm trying to get at so it's yeah see how all that green is all about almost, except for that little bit of shadow. It's just a little bit all in the one plane. So just watch that. So think that's where still life, uh, doing little still lives, uh, simple little ones. It can be um, as simple as I've got my sort of drink bottle here. It's very silvery gray. Um, you can just put that and paint that or draw that. Um, and the being a simple shape, it's much easier to get success. The more difficult we go, the more our technique gets under fire. Okay, so I'm just having a look at this guy. And I don't think there was 
a, oh, okay, I'm back up the top now, um, a, a reference. So there was just a little bit of compositional concern with that horizon line. See how it sort of has that, and it just draws my eye just a little bit into here. Uh, but I think it's more about the shadow in the foreground. I would have suggested to make the tree trunks or this tree a little straighter, but definitely a little thicker, give it a little more mass. So once again, that mass will come forward to the viewer. Uh, and I think the little shed or house or little hut in the background is just sitting, just sitting out too much. You can see the little bit of shadow just around it, a little bit of shadow, a little bit of purple shadow there. It'd be better to try and disguise that a little more. And with this foreground shadow, I would say you can go, shadow's always darker directly from the source where the shadow starts. So you can go darker at the base. And there, see how that starts? It's a reverse L shape composition. And then the other one would be is to just start to come a little lighter, a little bit similar to, you'll, you'll see a lot of similar uh, things happen with paintings, this being a classic, and the other one was a bit more of an L shape. By going darker and lighter, it'll propel this shape, the tree shape forward. Uh, let me just get that guy back up. So yes, it'll propel our foreground. Of course, we don't want that to finish there. It wants to go, blend into that, so have a bit of a transition into that lighter value. But um, there, you can see how that mass and the darker values helps bring the foreground forward. And also just watch this shape here, see how it's sort of almost like a trimmers just come in and trim that. It's better to try and say, bring some of that down here. Oops, more sort of down there, and maybe just a little bit, just so it breaks up it creates a better rhythm. That shape is just wanting to run the eye out in that direction. Uh, and it doesn't hurt to uh, just alter, see how we've got all of these purpley little bushes. I'd bring, even though I'm not right there, sorry, I'd bring some of these purple bushes up. Oops, that's, layer is locked. Okay, I'll just give that another go. I'll just back out of that. Uh, let's see if, yeah, I would sort of bring, see they're all about the same size. And then we've got sort of two there. So just a bit of change to the shapes there. So it'll, because what it's doing is it's a bit like a slippery slide, wanting the eye to go out uh, that direction. So just watch that as well. Okay, where are we up to? 19, I'm hoping. Oops, that's just blown out a little. Okay. The main concern with this one is tonal values. Uh, Compositionally, uh, it's, a, it's a technically difficult composition, but yeah, we don't have enough darks. Uh, and then we tend to get a slightly sort of muted um, result from our painting. See how everything's a little muted back here? Uh, without seeing, I think, a reference, we can go a little lighter with the, the panels, a little darker with our shadows, definitely a little darker in here. So it's more of a, um, a light and dark. Not so much um, uh, cool and warm. So I would like to see your work on your lights and darks. Uh, oh, and just watch sort of some of these legs. See how they sort of splaying out. It's kind of wanting to push the eye out that direction, even though that could be used as a leading line, but they are probably just a fraction too much on the steep side, I would say. Even just there will probably work better. But you can get more darks up in here a little bit more light there, even though, and the other one is just that, see how that shadow almost, the, the cast shadow of the umbrellas. So I, without seeing the, the uh, reference, I'd sort of try and sort of alter, because that one's almost following that and then that. So we've almost got a, a, bit, a bit of a, um, uh, you call them a crosswalk, we call them a pedestrian crossing, where you have the white and the dark and the white and the dark. So I would say just try and alter that composition, even if you can bring a bit of light in there and maybe even push the shadow across there. But um, 
there's quite a bit of potential, a lot of potential, I should say. You can even lighten that value there to help draw, because remember, going back to that circle, we try to draw the eye, and you'll notice a lot of the things that I've commented on are getting up outside that circle as well. So, a painting that just needs more light and dark, I believe, or mostly needs light and dark. So there we have the, the um, posted piece and here we have the reference. And I think we've got good use of lights and darks, but we haven't got enough of that really lovely mass of dark back in here. If you can remember what was going on with that, you can see even by just bringing in, see how this dark, even though I would like to get a little bit more uh, sensitivity, a little bit more uh, softness, so, so it's not all the same value. But, but you can see how, I'll just get rid of that red, you can see how the dark of that background, uh, let's go back to that one. So we're not quite playing our background up enough, this lovely background in there. I think because this whole painting will be won and lost by that nice bluey gray shadow in there. And then we want to strengthen the light on the water. Uh, oh yeah, you need almost three hands and uh, two brains to work one thing and one brain to work the other. Uh, and then we just have to watch. We do have a few too many of those yellow flowers or the yellow leaves, sorry. Uh, we mostly see where I've got those bits of red that's where I'll be playing the, the bright yellow the leaves. leaves. So I'd be so trying to subdue only slightly because by the time we get this strengthened, you can automatically see how that's starting to control the viewer. But then the other area that we need to do, similar with the, uh, some of those previous ones, strengthen, it's a reverse um, L shape or there's almost a little L shape going out that way. And I think you can get a little lighter in the foreground as well with this passage here. And just watch these strong diagonal lines on the water. They, they should and could be a lot subtler. Um, if we just jump quickly to the, the reference, uh, see how they're quite subtle there. So try and look for that subtlety. Even though the foreground is cold, but you can add a little bit of colour just to push that forward. Okie doke. Um, there's the reference for the painting, and then I'll just move on to the painting, and that is a little blurry at the moment. I'll just make him a little bigger. Lots of really lovely painting with this one. I can see the nice bits of uh, work. This shape may be just a little solid and a little, could have even just a bit of a suggestion of a hole where you would put your armrest, but it's really all about that little brick wall. Uh, the leading line is long, and we would like to sort of try and slow that eye down. So I would be saying, trying to lighten up some of this foreground. So if we just bring in, and I don't think we need to go full blown all that light, because it's almost going to knock you out, but definitely on that little, uh, ledge there. I think we can just bring it. See how actually coming to think of it now, I, we jump back. We probably can go a little lighter, but just be careful that we don't, oops, it's just spinning its wheels, that we don't where that green line just appeared. I'll just get rid of all those. Just be careful that we don't continue that line across there too much because that's going to push the eye out that direction. I think you probably possibly can subdue your background a little. I think we may have just a little too much going on. This nice painting there, but it's actually just taking away from the visual story and it's just starting to get up out of that. And I, I think you could bring in some bigger shapes on the foliage with those bits of light on that rock wall there, that'll definitely bring the foreground closer, make your overall painting stronger. So notice I could see some excellent work in that one. And I haven't been on the golf course for, oh, nearly a year now, but 
I do love a round of golf myself. So this one, I've probably seen scenes like this and I've actually thought, you know what, I love playing golf. Why haven't I painted any golf scenes yet? So I'll just flip between those two. And I think, just watch the foliage treatment, see how it's almost creating uh, lines there. You wanna build up that mass. Once again, try and remember foliage as just being your backdrop for the green, for the bunkers. So we wanna, and, and also the, um, uh, the foliage is just to tie the left to the right in, in this one in particular. But I think even, I think you can go oops, lighter with this foreground. I think your foreground, because the eye's going to the um, flag there nicely. Oops, it's not light enough. Just find my, I think you can go lighter with here, but the whole foreground will need to be not so light, that light, but can go one value, maybe even two values lighter. And what I would be doing is really playing up. See how that brings the eye forward. What we were doing prior to that was the foreground was just melting in to the mid distance, just a little too much. So we really want to lighten and brighten this. Um, probably could get a little more mass to the foliage up there and then just watch that shape and that shape are too much, a little too much the same. Um, but um, no, 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 it looks, looks a nice course to play on. Um, and we're in our winter now, so it's the best time to be out playing golf. So I'll hopefully get out before um, uh, it gets hot. Okay, so we're on to 24. Oops, we're starting to really make up some time now. Not that I'm trying to rush through the last ones, but uh, we'll just bring up the reference. And um, actually, I, have a, I live in an area that has a lot of water lilies in the creeks and the little streams. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I would say the bottom two thirds of the painting is really beautifully painted. It's working well. I can see a few little things that we can, that you could do to the foreground and to the water lilies. But I'll start on this. Um, I would be suggesting it's the background, the very background, those vertical shapes. So what I'd be suggesting is to simplify back here. See how that almost automatically pushes that shape back. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, and see, then it lights up and starts to get the eye to sit on the, uh, the water lilies more, not so much, because my eye was kind of going straight to the, the background. And then I'd suggest back down on this one thirds, two thirds into this area here, make the water lilies bigger, uh, br even probably bringing, I'd say even bring in a flower, quite a good sized flower, anchor that, so then, so then we have our primary focal point and then we can use the S or, or we say Z or Z, but you say Z uh, or, or like a Z shape uh, composition or S shape composition. And that's really all about, we, we, we may be able to just simplify some or make some of these big shadow shapes of these lilies bigger because it's more of a case of um, uh, getting depth through perspective. So making those shapes bigger and by these ones being small, so a little bit like big house in the foreground to tiny little houses in the distance, we'll be able to create just a bit more illusion of depth. But of course, uh, you can bring in some tree trunks or, or some sort of, it doesn't want to be just completely blank in the background, but just a, definitely less. Less, it, less is more as the old saying goes, see how when I take it out, uh, and not only is it uh, a little visually strong, but being that red is wanting to come forward, even though it's the red's working nicely up on that right hand corner. But yeah, with those lines there. But other than that, that's really um, standing up to be a really strong painting. Thank you. Okay. Oh, it's a pleasure. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Um, okay, then we're at 25. 
And I'll just bring that guy up a little bigger. Just a quick drink. Okay. Um, fence, even just as a visual sort of irritant when you're out painting, is always a bit of a pain. Um, and when I'm painting landscapes, if there's a fence, I'll normally put it in. But a lot of times with this type of scene, I would almost uh, um, select a, and, and decide to, to leave it out because even when looking at the reference, it's almost wanting to be created. When what's what fences are, uh, are meant to do is create a bit of a protection, a bit of a barrier. And I think that barrier is just stopping my eye from, and this looks like a watercolor, so it's almost impossible to edit that back, but whether you were to do another version. And, but, because the other concern is <clears throat> that there's really all that lovely light and we're not really maximizing that nice cast shadow onto the ground there. Because with painting, I like to look for symbols. So the symbol is the umbrella, but going back to Elioth Gruner and Streeton, and they would show where or where that light or object is being cast. So the symbol of the umbrella, the physical umbrella, but then it's shadow. So we, 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 we're kind of missing out and we kind of have crowded the, uh, the foreground out. So I would be wanting, even though you've got lovely work on the figures, especially the two in the middle, this one's just a little solid, could probably drop in a little bit of dark, really dark, dark, just a, a highlight where the, um, uh, the, the hair, you know, the darkest part where the hair sort of hits the shoulders. And I think it can just free up the composition a little more by uh, reducing the foreground. I think there's just a little too much. Um, because it is quite a busy scene in the mid distance, we can get away with all of that if we reduce the foreground information. So I think that's the main concern is, it looks like you made a decision late and went over a lot of that. And I think possibly I would have, now I've got the benefit of hindsight, I would have definitely said, yeah, leave that little bit of peace and quiet and possibly even leave out the fence. Um, and you probably can push back those windows, see how by taking those shapes, oops, wrong button, I almost feel like I'm playing a piano. Um, by pushing those shapes back, it makes it appear a little more um, uh, further away. So too much information in the background is only going to fight. So just to recap, simplify a little bit of the distance, simplify the foreground so that the eye can have a nice place to land uh, and possibly leave the, uh, the fence out if necessary. Um, these vertical lines may not even need to be there. I'll just have a quick look. Yeah, but they are a bit more subdued in the um, reference and they could even be left out if, if need be. Uh, it's once again in the mid distance, we don't really need to do it. Okay. Um, Mary, is this, or, or is this a local scene in Chicago? Yes, it's at our Chicago Botanic Garden. Gotcha, gotcha. Actually, my wife and I and mother-in-law and son, we went to our botanical gardens. Travis was working that day. But I do love botanical gardens. They, they, um, when they're done well, this aspect of the bridge, that is um, really just sensational subject matter to paint. The, the image is a little blurry to me. So if, if it's coming across, so then let's just jump. So I would say you push that shape back a little too far. Oops, that's just spinning its wheel there a little. Um, I would have almost tried to bring the base, that dark line or the base of the, the uh, bridge down a lot further. The overall painting has been a little saturated in the one color, the one value. Uh, so, especially sort of because it's left and right, because there was some really lovely, I would almost sort of, I'd have loved this. Uh, we call them a, a weeping willow, 
I'm not sure what type of tree it is, but they have that lovely, uh, almost vertical. And we, see, oh, that's lovely. the name that we use for them too. Great, great. And there's a lovely little bit of light on the bridge on the where you where you walk the, the pathway. I think this probably one is is a really perfect example of maybe just missed a, a, a good opportunity. Uh, you've chosen a great subject, but just haven't quite uh, approached it in the right way. So I would say a lot of bluey greys on the bridge. Get that bridge in quite big. Uh, and then we can have that little bit of light. You want a bit of shadow in behind. And then we can bring that weeping willow down in front, have that little bit of light in the background, play that up as, and then once you get that aspect that I, this aspect in this area, you don't really need much more because that's just, it's in that perfect uh, spot. Uh, and of course you want a little bit of water. I probably wouldn't, you don't really need to put the bridge in, uh, that, right, that lovely railing there. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's where I would start going much darker, much grayer with those values. You kind of started with the darkness there, actually, but I would have suggested just to try and go, because try and think of your shadows. Normally shadows are cool. So I would say build up that lovely cast shadow there, which is on the bridge and then start bringing, that's not bright enough, but see how quickly, oops, it's not quite light enough, how quickly that starts to come to life just with two values. And I think that's the direction that I would suggest to go. Okay. I believe this one's from Nashville. I'm actually fairly sort of familiar with Nashville, having a gallery just near Franklin, and I'm familiar and also fond of Nashville. I have a lot of good friends there that I normally stay with. And a good artist, Kevin Menku, we've managed to get out painting last time I was there. Okay, so there's the reference. So we'll just have a quick analysis of that. Buildings in the background, row of trees, bigger buildings in the foreground, vertical shape with the pole. I think I'm just going on what I can see, the uh, post, the, the power pole, is the, the colour just used is probably just a little too uh, blue. Oops, I'll just make my brush tools just a little too big. Yeah, I, I'd put, be putting red into that and even a fraction of yellow to make it more of a grey. I'll just click on that one. Yeah, we, you've got blue going, but see how it's stopping and starting, stopping and starting. There's a little bit of blue on here, a little bit of gray, a little bit of gray, a little bit of white. Always paint background cities or buildings at that distance all in one value. Almost this bluey gray on this would suffice, maybe even a touch more blue. And then we can come in, then we can come in and drop in some of those smaller little uh, little accents of the buildings. And you, you've almost done a similar thing with the foreground. You've almost done the same sort of thing. So, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, so I'll just quickly go to the reference. And I, I don't mind that you left the, uh, the buildings out, but you want to build up that, that tree line of dark and then so you're looking at all of those shadows. See how it's once again, it's stop and start. You've got the right values or pretty close to good darks. Maybe your light is a little too light and it's gonna jump. You could go, oh, that little value back in there is possibly the ideal value. I'll just grab a little bit of that. So it's still light. It's gonna show where light's coming from. But yeah, you, you've just created a little bit too much stop and start. The sky's good. We got great light coming in with the sky. You may have scrunched everything down a little low, which is then making it all about the sky. You either can make, lift the buildings up a little higher 
and have more foliage and maybe even a bit of a rooftop in there, which will create more depth to the background as well. So, um, but no, no, I've enjoyed every visit in um, Nashville. Never got to see a live show yet because I've always been working, unfortunately, but um, I'm a big Roy Orbison fan and he wrote a lot of his top hits from 1960 to 1964 in Nashville. Uh, and they had a little museum there. Unfortunately, we missed it uh, the last time we were there. We were 15 minutes too late to get on the tour. Um, so now we move to this one. So we're up to 28. We're nearly there. I've got about nine minutes. Once again, a little sort of um, landscape and dominated in green. So let's bring, and I like the idea what you went with trying to warm it up, bring more red. But I think we have gone a little too red in the background. Uh, we can put red, but it needs to be a green, more greeny red, a cooler red, uh, not so warm. I think that's the main concern. Let's just watch. And the danger with is how many horizontal lines. Let's try and lose some of those dark shadows, those horizontal lines in the distance, and try and think of the water as one shape and then a second shape. So that's a great way to create depth and distance. You do have a bit of a line here in the clouds. Uh, we can lose a little bit of it as it disappears to the right-hand side. That'll hopefully disappear soon. But yeah, the, the foreground is just a little too busy. You can actually, with all those horizontal lines, you can play up some more of those sort of shapes, the lilies in the distance, oh, in the mid foreground, sorry. And this grass here can see how by making it a little bigger, let me just quickly look at the reference again. It doesn't go all the way across, but you can make those, those water lily areas definitely a little bigger. So that's, that's reducing the background and enhancing the foreground is so important. So we're on to this one. Uh, this is number 29, just waiting for that to come up into focus. Uh, I'll just check to see if this one is the reference photo, or it might be another painting, fingers crossed. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's the reference. Oh, good, they're lining up. Um, so I think, let's just check, is that the painting, please? Yes, okay. There's some great use of of uh, colour, of tonal values. So have a look at those beautiful blues back in there. They're the kind of blue and bluey purples that Elie of Druna uh, used to use. And it created just lovely atmosphere. That blue just wants to uh, uh, go into the background up against these, because if you were to put this or yellow back there, we can see how that's going nicely. The concern is, is more of a di distribution of shapes. Notice how we've got a little bit of green, a little bit of green, a little bit there, a little bit of a shape there. We've got to think of that whole passage back there as one shape. That's our background, that's our distance. Because what's happening is, uh, especially with the little punctuations of shadow in that little shadow shape there, the background's not tying together. So once again, the eye is wanting to, it's trying to, to analyze all of these and see so you've got some lovely warm shapes in the foreground, but they're being undone a little by not simplifying that background. And then we can place those nice brights up against that, those bright colors. Um, and I think we just have a couple too many horizontal lines. We can just look at losing just a couple of those, because uh, once again, it becomes that crosswalk sort of effect. But there's some beautiful light. There really is a, a, a lovely feeling of light in it. It truly is just a, a simplifying the background, because you've got beautiful light on there. Uh, there's great darks. Your tonal control is excellent for light and dark, warm and cold. It's more the shapes uh, in controlling those. So. I'll just double check if I've got any, oh, there might be a third, I think there was one 
that I missed actually that came in. Uh, and this one, if, if, if we were to remove a couple of the darks, so this, this one is just a little all too light and almost not quite mid-tones, but just a little too light. So I'd be saying, let's bring up, um, let's strengthen, see some of the darks up in under there. Uh, let's even bring a bit more. And with once again, I'm only guessing, it's almost like an educated guess. And then we can bring some more light up onto here. Just so we get sort of a portrayal of light. It looks like it's coming from the light to the, uh, from the right to the, the left. Um, but no, so we need to build up those mid-tones. So even the shadow underneath, probably not going to quite get the right uh, colour or value. Oops. But the shadows underneath the, the chair. So I'll just deliberately undo all that. And we so, so I can really highlight the area that I'm... It's, so it's under the chairs. See, because once again, with the, similar with the uh, earlier cafe scene, uh, the cafe culture really has spread throughout the world. And I, not that I'm not a real coffee drinker, but I love the atmosphere, I think, more. And my wife loves, my, uh, Alex Marlison loves the cup of coffee, but I love to be there uh, analysing and, and uh, looking at things. So, yeah, the light's coming from that direction. You can subdue that background, see how that's wanting to fight even before. Uh, so we, we want, so once again, we've got to think of our painting in a plane of foreground, and this is part of the foreground, mid-distance, and then trying to create some distance in that left-hand side. So this is all just a little high key. It just has to, uh, all paintings are just greys, but we need to subdue that mid-distance, subdue everything. And I think I may have, it. oh yeah, that's back to that one. So I think I do have everything um, done there. Hopefully, I'll, I'll apologise if I have missed um, anyone's paintings or... Um, there was one that was missed. Uh, it had the uh, very red... Um, uh, it was, and it was a back, uh, that Umbrellas. Mm -hmm. Red umbrellas. During our break, but... Yeah. It was just at break time as oh, right. you were doing it. Okay, so we were around 14 or 15. Uh, so it might be the next one after that. Uh, before oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Actually, this, this, this really was a strong painting. Very strong. I really love this one. There's some great work you've got going with your group. Um, it's... And, and, we, we always have to remember that everyone's starting at a different spot. Um, I, I started, my father had 25 years of experience and as much as my father wished me to paint better, wanted me to paint better, it's really just work. So I truly understand everyone's at a different stage in their work, different stage in their career or their journey. But this was a, some really lovely work in this one. I'm glad you uh, reminded me of this one because this was actually a, a, a favourite. I really did love this one. I know I think you, there you're were all my children. Couple. You're all my children and you shouldn't have favourites. But, um, <laughs> uh, but a few little areas that we can, I felt that the, the actual post, the actual uh, height of the, uh, the table from there to there was just a little on the short side. So if I just take that out, see how short, even though we're wanting to disguise some, but I would suggest even if we do, because I do love to use a stop start sort of almost um, for uh, getting information. So it's not all just one shape. You, uh, we can use a, a hit and miss almost like Morse code. Uh, but so I definitely think this shape, oh, that was just a fraction light. just a little stronger and see that's about almost where it needs to be and then that puts the chair a little too high so then that would mean the chair not that far but possibly we'd need to bring him at least down to there and good thing is this is a quite a simple 
So I think the chair is a little small. See how that now starts to really... Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, yeah. It, that's, I think, about the placement where I would love to see him. But there is a really lovely... Um, uh, I've never really thought of a good word for it, but it's where one shape interlocks with another. Uh, and it's this shape up here. I love how that little... You've got that little dark accent um, up there. We possibly could have brought, oops, that needs to go a little darker. I'm just up on this red. You could have probably brought just one or two more just to show a little more that it is a, uh, what do you call it? A, um, one of the umbrellas that has that scalloping effect. And was that 16, I hope? Oops, not that one. Oh, wrong one. Is it 16 or 15? Oh, yeah, 15, sorry. You had it. Yep. Yeah, so you probably could bring in a few more of those. Um, and just watch the pink flowers. Just, oops, not right enough. Notice that the pink flowers are sort of one shape, two shapes, three shapes. And I'll just go back to a 15A. I always love to go back just to see, oops, that is really weird. Come on. Yeah, so they are separated, but see how that one ties in with the post. Um, so yeah, so I would be saying, look for, uh, with, with shapes, especially mid distance and background shapes, there are islands and there's continents. Small shapes, I like to think of as islands, and, oh sorry, actually the best way to explain it really is, this foreground shape is the continent, so that's the one big shape. And that's fantastic because uh, we do want a great way to control our composition is to have one big shape. And that's what we've done. Beautiful work on the table top. I really love that. But Australia, America as a big continent or North America, uh, Australia is a good example because we're an island. We have 5,000 little islands off our major continent. But we don't want to dot have, have them dotted, dotted, dotted. We do want to have them still as if we're pretending that there's a bridge between those islands because we want to visit them. So we want to, we, we, oops, I'll just go back out of that and I'll bring up a bit of that purple. So I'm going a long way around to explain something. <laughs> but now see how by building up that mass, that ties that whole shape as a shape. And if these look like, I um, oh, forget what they call the, not gardenias. Um, uh, hydrangeas. Hydrangeas, yes. As kids, my friend's grandmother had them, so we nicknamed them granny plants. Sorry for <laughs> having that awful nickname, but um, hydrangeas are a classic one where they are big clumps and they are very hard to control. So I would say, let's take that guy out and look at trying to see how that, that can actually take this passage out and let's say even bring this shape down. So then we're looking for more a rhythm uh, of how the eye is bouncing, a joining up of those shapes because with them as single individual shapes, the eye wants to, oh, actually I probably should have let you photograph the scene there if you wanted. Um, I'm not sure how to go back actually. Uh, you probably could have photographed that foreground uh, but now no, see how, because we, we don't want the eye to zip straight past all of that lovely uh, information. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how to go back. So yeah, yeah, so that, that's the one, is joining up those islands, uh, enhancing, uh, oh, and actually probably one last thing, just watch, oops, better come up in green. Just watch that line and that line they are just a little too much the same. You could actually make this one a little lighter and stronger, that whole mass, and maybe just reduce. See how by reducing that highlight, that can actually also reduce the importance and then maybe even just making one little shape, not as light, but highlighting one little area, not see how it's just a little too much the same. That, that's getting yeah. sort of fussy and really 
finicky, to be honest. But I appreciate that. Thank you. That's a pleasure. And that's why if you, if you had your camera, you can almost, um, and you probably could go a little lighter in the foreground as well. But I think that's basically where I was with that before. Yeah, I'll remember. Yeah, yeah. So that that's what I would, and see, that's probably just a little on the fat side, but really lovely painting. So, um, oh, thank you. Yeah, so no, really well done. Actually, I just stepped back, and you probably could just reduce a couple of, just leave out a couple of those. But yep, because that's why it's as I'm up close. That's one way to look at it, but it is good even on a screen to step back as well. So. Okay, dog folks, I think um, I'm just about cooked. Yeah, good for you, Holly. Uh, that's been a pleasure, been a pleasure. We have had many comments here of thanking you and saying what a great uh, uh, session it was, great critique, uh, many, many comments here. So thank you so much for that and for all your time and also uh, working out this time difference. Uh, really yep. appreciate it. Uh, it's, it's a real pleasure, Mary, and, and thanks for inviting me in to be almost be a part of your group for a couple of hours. I'm sort of like a, um, a little uh, guest for those two hours, so it's been a, um, a real privilege and pleasure as well. So well, we hope to see you here in Chicago sometime, and uh, we'll, we'll work on that. Yep. Well, even if that does fall true, I, I would still love to even visit Chicago's because I, I I do want to get to the Palette and Chisel Club and because, as I mentioned, I've always been a huge fan of Richard Schmidt's and I'd love to see where he sort of... Uh, well, there's been uh, a couple of people on the board of the Palette and Chisel on this call, so... Oh, right, we, right. We can, we can hook you up. Uh, yeah, right, yeah. One, one of those people it, made a comment. Yeah, so. even if it's just a visit, um, I'd love to... Because uh, I had the great pleasure of meeting Richard last year at, at his home with Nancy and... Uh, and I did see the building when I was there in 2013, and it's a beautiful building, but I, we, we, it was late afternoon, and, um, so I didn't get the chance to go in, but no, that would be a, a real uh, treat for me as well, so. Well, we, we can hook you up, so. Uh, sounds great, sounds great. <laughs> okay, so, Mary. Thank you, and send us, send me uh, any of your oh, new materials God. and workshops and things, and I will make sure it goes into our materials. I know people want to follow up with you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Bye. Next Wednesday. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Okay,